Welcome everyone. We are joined by Helen Hamilton this morning in a conversation across across the miles, across the earth. With I'm in California. Christina is in New Jersey with all most of you, and Helen is in England. So we're spanning the globe today, circling you and inviting you into a conversation, finding out more about Helen Hamilton and her visit to our community, what her background is and just becoming acquainted, getting to know and connect with each other. So um, introducing myself as Reverend Catherine McClelland and Reverend Christina Marie Layer and Helen Hamilton are all here to join you today. And Reverend Christina, if you would please lead us in an invocation for this time together. Recognizing the one presence that is the essence of all life. It's one present that is omnipresent everywhere, all knowing, omniscient. It's presence that is the essence of each being on this planet, living, moving, having its its life expressing perfectly, radiantly, magnificently within each being. Knowing that all forms of life are this one essence, are this radiant light, this pure energy, this awareness, this consciousness that is the oneness that we all share together right here and right now in this moment, this radiant presence that is It is the substance of all that is. There is no other, no separation, only oneness, only unity, only consciousness, only awareness. In this recognition of truth, I know that this meeting today with Helen Hamilton on behalf of CCO flows magnificently. Helen expresses her own inner truth in ways that are perfect, illuminating for all CCL members. We know that the truth is universal. It transcends all spiritual principles, all backgrounds, all concepts. There is only this truth in all of our words, all of our activities. When we just are, when we just be, we know that we are the one. And I know that this truth expresses itself through Helen right here and right now, and through Reverend Catherine and Reverend Christina as well in this meeting today. And knowing this truth, knowing this perfect expression, the magnificence of each moment in each of these beings, these perfect expressions of the one. Right here today, in this moment, I express my deepest gratitude and appreciation, knowing all is well, all is in perfection, all is in the flow of the divine. I recognize this creativity to be the intention of the divine manifesting itself right here and right now. And in this appreciation, simply say, thank you, and so it is. Thank you, and so it is. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, that was lovely. So Helen, uh, I think we'd like to start today to introduce you to our community at CCL, Center for Conscious Living in Morristown, New Jersey, by just asking you a couple questions about, first, perhaps, what has been your journey? Um, have you always been this uh, perfectly peaceful, awakened being? Um, uh, or have you had something that uh, 
um, or has, how has your journey, how has your journey evolved so we can understand the blessing of that experience for you and for your teaching and for your students? Well, um, that's a, that's a big question. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. So excited to be here. Um, no, absolutely was not always peaceful at all. Um, very, very first thing I remember um, was being quite scared and feeling very, I mean, obviously I was physically small as a child, but feeling very small, very vulnerable. And um, that feeling was just there most of my life. Um, and I was always looking for something. I, I don't, didn't know for a long time what that was. And of course, many people have a similar like a seeking or a searching for something and um that just got kind of louder and louder as I had my family and um as my children started to grow up it, it was I had some relative success in the outer world in business and things like that and yet still I, there was just this empty hole inside somewhere that just could not be filled and seemed to get bigger and bigger. It was just um, to the point where um, in my early 30s, I ended up in a very deep depression um, that lasted a good few years and couldn't seem to find any reason for it uh, in an outer world, worldly way at least. And... Um, Um, uh, coming through that and sort of climbing back out of that it, it was very clear that there was something missing in my life and I still didn't know what that was and then a friend um, because this is a shortened version but um, she, a friend introduced me to meditation she said it would help with um, recovering from depression which I was uh, you know struggling with still the very first time I sat to meditate, uh, there was just this incredible feeling that I'd never experienced before, like real joy, real bliss. And I began to try to find out everything I could about meditation. Of course, I heard about this term awakening and um, I was obsessed from that point forwards. Um, took me a good few years to, to finally come find peace uh, stumbling along, <clears throat> and I finally started to realize that the what I've been looking for was inside. I've been trying to get it from the outside, from my work, my relationships, um, with my children, everything really. And the, things just started to turn around after a while. There was a lot of struggling and suffering, but something within me was no longer able to uh, except anything else than awakening after that. No idea how I was going to achieve it or what it even was, but <laughs> it was just something was very, very much obsessed. Um, eventually, peace just began to break through um, with regular practice, spiritual practice, and became more and more stable um, and eventually permanent and effortless. And then joy came and... Um, stayed it's very very different now to how it was if you'd have met me 20 years ago I was on the edge of <laughs> falling down the drain and uh alcoholic although I hadn't admitted that to myself at the time um so yeah very very different uh from how it is now um a total turnaround in a way so yeah I think um Hopefully a lot of people can relate to the moments where the darkness just becomes too vast and we find another way. And then, like you said, stumbling along through the years and um, particularly what I was curious about was what part of your past melded with your future in terms of the teachings that you were aware of around spirituality and how did they 
kind of blend together into what I know now is a teaching that you hold as something that you carry, that we're inviting you to come to this community to bring with you. How did that process unfold for you or in whatever you want to answer about that? I don't know <laughs> if it's how is the answer, but is the question. I think it started when I first heard about this term awakening and um, I, I was reading all kinds of things I could get my hands on, like um, anything to do with manifestation and, you know, all of that stuff, trying to change my outside world. And it was, wasn't working at all. And so this, after this experience in meditation, which only happened one time, every time after that, it was just noise, you know, and it was like, <laughs> I was given this um, taster of why it was worth doing this work, you know, just to keep me going. I began to research every spiritual pathway I could find and every um, religion I could um, understand, you know, and every spiritual teacher from as far back as the Upanishads right up to modern contemporary teachers like um, Ajay Shanti was and Muji hugely, Eckhart Tolle, Tolle and um, everything in between that I could find um, from Meister Eckhart to, I was just trying to, I don't know, trying to find the, the common, the commonality in those and just like a, I don't know, it's about 10 years. I was just obsessively, everything I could get my hands on and trying to live it the best I could and uh, eventually, after a lot of finding out what didn't work, <laughs> I began to realize what did work uh, in terms of the, the truth, the truth that we are, that divine self, that it's not an experience. It's not going to be found by a particular experience, although they are nice, but it must be about what has always been here, what has always been real. Finally, I started to understand that and something began to shift from a lot of knowledge up here to a deeper understanding. Um, I was lucky enough to meet with Ajay Shanti at the retreat and something just uh, profoundly shifted. I just, my heart just opened and uh, that intense, immense presence of love that he is just, uh, it brought it from a very dry book knowledge into a very, uh, very real lived um, experience. And uh, as shy and as unworthy as I felt of teaching, uh, it just kind of started to happen anyway. I'm actually a very shy person, believe it or not. And um, it just kind of started to happen anyway. Friends would start asking questions and it just started here in my house. And then it became much, much bigger over time. Uh, and I just try to always use my own experience because it's it's authentic, it's true. And I find as a, a mother of four, a lot of people can perhaps connect with me in, in, in a way that maybe they can't with other teachers. Um, but all of this big, every teaching I find just kind of melted into this mishmash of, uh, somethingness I don't know that just seems to want to now move move outwards into into helping other beings and and really what else is there to do after after that you know that's as worthwhile after awakening begins to deepen it's the most deep sense of contribution I think we can have ever so and so with that sense of contribution that you feel, then um, I imagine that now you said things are growing and you're starting to have a, a fuller impact and you're just in the flow with that experience, allowing it to unfold the way it does and fully allowing and trusting and opening this space. And this is the space that we are getting to interact with you in. And we're very, very grateful for your presence and for... Okay. For the teachings that you're bringing um it's it's very exciting to have you so present and so alive and so human and so unfolding and so continuously in the process to interact with 
And um, Christina, was there a question that you had on your mind that you would like to ask Helen? Something that came to me as you were talking, Helen, was um, <clears throat> you mentioned being um, awakened and um, you know having that as an aspiration at a certain point in your life. And um, I was wondering if you could clarify that as to what that means to you, awaken, you know, being awakened and what, you know, is, is that accessible? Is that easily accessible to others as well? Like, how did you come to be in that awakened state? Yeah, it's very, very much through trial and error, like saying, <laughs> finding out what didn't work. Um, and it started off not as any noble intention at all. I just wanted to stop suffering. I just couldn't take another day. Um, we were talking about those dark times. I just, I just couldn't, um, right. I had to find a way to stop suffering or I was going to, I don't know where it was spiraling downwards, but, um, I, it was just this desperate search to stop suffering. Mm. What was the most effective and quick way to do that? And for it to be permanent, uh, that that was really what brought me to the path, like a lot of beings. But afterwards, I guess my understanding of awaken began to change. That our understanding of why we suffer became clearer. That we're we're living inauthentically. We're living uh, from an idea of who we think we are that just isn't true. We we imagine ourselves to be small beings, separate beings. And that that is um, really not true, that there's only one consciousness, one presence, one essence of all things, as you said so beautifully in the invocation. And that the suffering comes from the wrong identification as just a, just a human being. We are that too, but not just that. And so living authentically from what we really are would kind of be the best definition for me right now of mm. awakening um this beautiful dance of, of being this infinite being the infinite being all of us awake to itself but then also living its human life doing you know being a mother and being a sister and all the roles that we play um the body plays um what it's like to explore that from the recognition of who you already are. <clears throat> to me, that's that's awakening. And it's constantly um, challenges you to grow and expand and to deepen in that. There's a unfolding, there's a finality in, in terms of the end of suffering. There's also an unfoldingness that really begins in earnest then and some kind of deepening. So it's, it's, it's about the divinity, but also that that divinity is appearing as a human being as well, and the highs and the lows of human existence. May I ask a follow-up question to that, um, Helen? So in terms of how that looks in your life, um, I have my own ideas of what that looks like or how that would appear, but can you help us understand you know exactly what that shows up like in your in your daily life how does how does the awakening that's already there and present how does the challenge come and how is the growth opportunity received and you know taken in i know that part of it is a deep commitment but also part of it is is well that the sort of <clears throat> an inner choice and then part of it is just an inner understanding and a being in space with and being in life with. Um, I just wondered if you had a way of speaking about that that would just sort of help people ground their own experience a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's really more for me like um, capacity to be authentic with whatever's happening. So before if there was some friction in a relationship or <clears throat> somehow to challenge or my body was sick or something 
there would always be this pushing against that. I don't want to, I just, you know, some energy inside that was telling a lot of stories about it. And um, now it's more like, okay, this, this is what it means to be me today, right now. This is it. So if I'm frustrated, I'll be frustrated. If I'm challenged with something, it, it, it's fully, um, I'm fully there for it. I feel um, at home in my life, finally. I never felt mm -hmm. at home in my body in my life, ever. Now it's like equally embracing the difficult moments as the, the joyful moments. And sometimes in very ordinary ways, if if... <clears throat> there's a challenge in a relationship for example there's an understanding that this is some expansion of that divine love trying to emerge whereas before it would have been seen as a problem you know what have i why is this happening what have i done wrong now it's like okay what's what's trying to open up here something is um and just have that perspective as your <clears throat> your um default setting um, rather than it being a problem first. So mm -hmm. there are still difficult situations come up, but they, um, they're handled from a very different place. I don't know if that kind of points to it a bit or if you want me to expand in some other area. Well, I was just thinking it almost sounds like what you're committed to is having every situation reveal the opportunity to go deeper into your loving and sort of using that as the purpose of everything that you're doing. And so even though you feel all those feelings, yeah, you're still okay. focused on what is this trying to reveal to me? Is that, is that a way of saying that? Yeah. It's a very good way to put it. There's um, always expansion going on in the manifestation and you're just kind of actively participating in that rather than fighting it now. You know, it's, mm. it, it, this is always expanding. Whatever, whatever this divine being is, the way that it's showing up is always um, expanding. So we take a very normal thing, such as my relationship with my children or some very spiritual thing like the teaching itself. It's always changing and growing and deepening and it'll never stop. And and there's some there's a yes to that inside. If that that's what life actually is, really, it's an opportunity to recognize ever clearer each day who we already are. And that can be, it sounds quite spiritual, but it can be just stopping in the street to say hello to someone and smiling and connecting with them, you know, in a very normal way that I might have just walked past before out of fear or something. Or just lost in my own thoughts, you know. Just being able to see this this person could really just use a a laugh and a smile, or th that's what it's really about, isn't it? The human relationships that we have, really. That's why we're we're doing any of this. It's um, just feeling deeply connected and intimate with with life in every way we can. That that always keeps deepening. In, in very normal ways, you know, it's opening a door for someone when they've got their hands full and it's meeting people's, you know, actually looking them in the eye and being able to look someone in the eye. I couldn't do that before. I felt so um, ashamed all the time. So they, they might seem very normal things, but but they're actually so beautiful. It's It's wonderful. I am. Um, I heard you use the word intimacy, which is a profound experience for me of uh, unfolding in this consciousness. And um, I wondered if you might comment on intimacy and vulnerability. And you were sort of alluding to it just now with the, I used to be afraid to say something or look someone in the eye. And how does that compare with, you know, what you're actually talking about that's underneath and that's coming from the inside? I'm just curious how you would put words on that. It's um, there's like this this drive to connect with that divine essence in whichever way it's showing up. So, let me take a very ordinary example. Like um, here, like everywhere, there's a lot of homeless people, 
And <clears throat> before I would have just walked walked past them because I would have felt scared or something. And th there's just this drive to actually connect with this light that you can see in people's eyes, right? We can see it's there. Um, and some of the best conversations I've had have been just sitting on the pavement next to someone who doesn't have anywhere to to live, but they are open and and that word vulnerable that you use for me that used to have a, such a negative um, energy to it. It felt very unsafe to be vulnerable, but now it's why would I want to guard myself? Because I'm missing out. On, of course, we all do until we don't, but. Um, just an openness of the heart and a willingness to meet someone authentically. Um, they're some of the most awakened beings I've ever met, people, because they have nothing to lose most times. Um, so there's a, And they're so appreciative of just a, a real honest conversation, you know, not just people giving them money and moving along, which is fine too, but for me, just not being scared and being able to... Uh, just sit with them and meet them. And each of us changes each other's day, right? We're not, we're different after we have that encounter. And that's happening all the time. Like with this conversation where our, our day will be different, right? And our life after this point, um, from whatever happens here. And vulnerability became <clears throat> openness, um, willingness, some, some, some word like that. Uh, open heartedness, some something like that. Yeah, it sounds like it shifted from something to be afraid of to something to expand into, which was actually the joy of the intimate connection that you were making and are making. Yeah, and that that's, that's a like really good a, way to put it. Yeah, it's sort of like a drive now in you. Like it feels like a drive has the drive to be safe and to go this way has mm -hmm. now become the drive to be open and come this way in connection with others. because there's no there's no better feeling is than when you really connect with another human being hmm. or an animal or anything but when you really don't have that um capacity anymore to close down because the joy of opening is is it's addictive in itself it's <laughs> and finding out where, where will we go through this conversation this encounter how will we expand it's it's delicious, you know, when you're not guarding yourself that way. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful way to live. Um, Christina, did you have any another question that was coming up for you? I um, I'm thinking back to when we first opened our conversation, and you talked about how, um, you know, earlier in your life, you were seeking to end the suffering. And hearing the way you uh, talk about your experiences in your life now, um, what I'm hearing you say is, you know, you're experiencing life fully as a human being, and you're fully present in every experience and every moment of your life as much as you possibly can in this moment. And I, I feel it, or I hear from you a sense of joy and wonder coming from you as you talk about that and I'm wondering if that is similar to the end of suffering like what is the end of suffering and is that part <laughs> of being always aware of the divine being that we are yet participating in the world as a human no matter what our situation is in any moment wow well, um <clears throat> Yeah, for me, the end of suffering was um, an in inability to argue with whatever was going on in that moment. It was an acceptance of what is. So, <clears throat> um, as that deepened, it was just it, it deepened from a non-resistance into this awe and wonder and delight and. Technically, I'm 49 years old, but inside I'm like a little three-year-old, just like, wow, wow, you know, um, trying to be, pretend to be an adult when I need to be. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of joy 
and there's a there's an innocence in every human being isn't there that is that divine essence and that deepens into this total unwillingness to form any conclusion about anything it, it's just I, I just don't want to do that anymore i don't want to tell any stories um there's a, del a delightful discovery of what this moment is rather than a thinking about it you know so it's it's just why would you watch the trailer about the movie of your life or just go watch the movie instead you know it's most most of us just watch the trailer as i did the trailer over and over again you know and um it, it just it just comes with a sense of wonder that how on earth did this cosmic divine essence show up as all of this and every day it shows up as different more ever more delightful ways and i don't know what that's going to look like but i know it's going to be better than it was because it's an expansion mm -hmm. in just very ordinary ways like my daughter and i my youngest daughter spent some time together yesterday and it was even more delicious than it's ever been next time we'll be even more so you know so it's not it's not like a lofty thing. It's very ordinary. Uh, just like the joy of driving somewhere. You know, very, very normal things that perhaps we don't see uh, when, we're, when we're lost in our thoughts. Like being able to drive down the road and look at the colours changing or the blossom or, you know, the hear the birds singing and things like that that, that I would have totally missed before. Totally. And being... Unable to be anywhere else than here, you know, and now it is just utterly peaceful. When you're speaking, I, don't feel, I always feel like I'm doing such a cheap job of trying to put words to an experience, <laughs> but that's all we have, right? So, oh, sorry to interrupt for a moment there. I um, I was getting this sensation, and this is an experience, and so I use the word love a lot when I'm trying to express what I hear you or I imagine that you are also trying to express right now it's this this connection that is established right here across the miles across this entire earth on this little video screen is you know if there was ever a message of COVID it was you know we're, we're physically not together but look at all the ways we're discovering to be together and to be so connected. And so sitting here with you talking and I'm, I, Christina, I'm sure I, I don't want to speak for you, but I'm having the experience of my own ability to feel the expansion that we all share. And so as you teach you, I imagine that you go around the world and you find people who have the same resonance and then you find people who are yearning for the resonance and then you find people who don't know anything about the resonance and so i know that you developed a teaching um, that you have specific steps and i've spent some time on your website to pay attention to that and i'm curious the process that you went from having an experience which you're doing such a beautiful job of expressing just in your beingness the words are immaterial really we can <laughs> feel that sense but I'm curious now okay now you went to try to put some work some activity some process to that for human beings to be able to take a step along the journey one after the other and find what you found and you don't necessarily need them to go through everything you went through <laughs> to get here <laughs> we, we don't need to suffer like that um <laughs> And that, that's the the drive of everything that's going pouring out here is to try to simplify it and focus on what actually worked to bring me peace, you know. Yeah. So can you say anything about, you know, the process? Is it what does it involve? What is there a part of it that has anything to do with prayer, the way you would identify prayer? I'm I know you do meditation, that that's a big part of what you do. So I'm just curious if there's some way that you have of uh, maybe summarizing or even the process of going from this vast field of awareness to, okay, now I'm going to tell, mm -hmm. I'm going to find some steps or tell the way or try to show the way or something. Yeah. It's um, like most things I think in my journey, it was 
um, after peace had really sort of settled in and for a little while I was just peaceful there was there was this deep peace but then there, there just began to become this restlessness again peace as well as restlessness and there was a real sense of I'm going to say not being finished but not in a suffering way like it wasn't enough that just this body is like okay there's, there's so many other uh being suffering you know there was this intense fire that was happening inside and for a while I was just totally sort of focus on looking back at the process that I'd been through and what actually did work, that what was, um, and, and this dissolve in the ego course came out of this introspection. If I, if I only had like four or five hours to sit with someone, what would I want to tell them so that I knew if I never saw them again after that, for whatever reason, I'd told them what, what was the most essential thing. Um, mm -hmm. And it really came down to um, a balance, like rowing a boat with two oars, finding out who you really are, actually experiencing that presence, that essence of everything, not just thinking about it. but And then techniques like contemplation. So we could call that meditation or self-inquiry, both of those, and then contemplation to the other or the other side of that coin is letting go of who we thought we were those those mm -hmm. ideas that tend to cling on and still you know make us uh disturbed so that i'd like to say that that's all kind of got formulated but it just seemed to want to express itself and i was just literally watching my hands type this thing and uh even like now, just just watching my mouth speak these words, it's just expressing itself. It's not a separate person doing that. It's it's. I love what you said about love. Really, it's love wanting to spread that love in the most efficient way, isn't it? And uh, what is it that takes the least amount of time to come to peace? Peace that lasts and stays. So that's the focus of all of this to to cut to try to simplify. A lot of the great teachings have been very lost in a lot of um, cultural background and um, other things that have diminished their availability to a lot of people, I think. So it's like, how can we say it as simply as possible and get that across? Um, yeah. And that's different for me every day, how it's expressing itself. It's Again, it's that expansion. So it's... But mainly, um, well, you touched upon the word prayer. It's it, it's all led by prayer. My 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 life is a prayer started out as a plea bargaining, <laughs> like please get me out of this trouble, you know, like we all do. <laughs> I'll meditate every day if you get me out of this mess I've got myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly that. And then this um, deepened into this. I just really want to know who I am. Like I want to, I need to, I have to, and then even further into, please help me help other beings. And, and then I don't know, I kind of ended up in a silent place where there isn't really any difference between that and meditation. It, it's just this kind of telephone call with the essence of, you know, just, just a deep connection with what all of this is. Sometimes that might take the form of some words, but it's it's like a listening, a real a real deep prayer is a listening, isn't it? To whatever creativity and guidance wants to come through today, so it's all driven by that deep connection, that prayer. It's and in the end, you stop you stop doing anything other than that, right? You're just open and listening. Where would you want to? try to drive something that's so beautiful on its own anyway it's, we could never really come to that kind of creativity that already is could we we could it'd be a pale comparison so yeah it's uh it, it's just a mix between finding out who we are and who we're not and <laughs> getting clear on who we're not <laughs> 
Christina had, um, Reverend Christina in the beginning had mentioned that CCL has sort of an eclectic expression of itself and culturally, certainly in different religions um, mm -hmm. and had mentioned sort of interfaith as something that happens. And also for me, um, there was work by Brother Wayne Teasdale, who was a monk that he called interspirituality that to me really um, captured the essence of both the interfaith world where we come from cultures and belief systems and structures that make sense to us so we're safe, so we can walk in deeper. But also once we get in deeper, we suddenly realize we're swimming with a whole bunch of people from a whole bunch of diverse and eclectic experiences. And which to me also enhances the joy, right? It's like, oh, it's not all blue or yellow or pink. It's all this, it's everything. Um, and so I, I wanted to share with you that I, I do think that everything that you're saying, you know, we would say, um, we talk a lot about love or we talk a lot about oneness. And it's all about this way that we all come together in the spiritual realm, this essence, as you were saying, that is, is here. So I really see that CCL is very, very lucky to have you coming to speak so easily and so authentically from the self, from the identity. I guess we sometimes call it, we identify a high, a capital S self mm -hmm. that is the identity of the fullness of who we are. And then there's that smaller S that can sometimes, well, brings us fully into the of experience yes. <laughs> of being alive <laughs> um, and living with both as you said, and, and being able to find the oars in the river, as you were saying, um, I really think this is the perfect time for you to be joining us in this community. And I really feel the essence of your presence very fully here on, on Zoom. And I won't be able to be in the room with you, but I will be holding with you on Zoom with all the people who want to join us on Zoom. But that love, it doesn't, it doesn't stop by distance anyway. No. No. The, the options don't really matter <laughs> in that way. It's yeah. They don't. And and I'm really glad to be able to say that my experience with you here today and for others who might join us on Zoom, that it is completely possible and likely that you will have the full experience of being in the presence. Well, maybe just the presence is the way to say it. Just the presence. Um, yeah. With you, with us, with people who are gonna be in a room together and people who will be on Zoom. Um, do you have any words to say about that at all? Yeah, it's, um, it, we, the way, we obviously we do a lot of stuff up with Zoom and um, classes and people in the other, literally the other side of the planet that are waking up to to this beautiful presence and we've proved time and time again that it, it makes because this is one of the, the the ideas that really held me back that I have to I mean it's nice if we can sit in the same room but it, you know this has been this huge myth that you have to be literally in the physical presence of a teacher and I just really we've just proved that to not to be true you know um it's people are having deepenings all over the planet um because they, we're connecting here with our essence right it's it's infinite it's universal and how could any amount of distance really stop that it's just not possible and it's proven time and time again to be about our openness to to challenge those kinds of ideas that really allow us to to meet very deeply even over zoom you know to to have life a life-changing experience rather than physical miles it's it's willingness and openness isn't it and where we're coming from inside yeah i was thinking about um you know the presence is always where we are and so sharing it as you're guiding and people are having their own experience with the presence, it will be right where we are. And that shared experience doesn't, isn't affected by that. And it was, um, I thank you for your words on that and for knowing that your teachings have easily gone out 
in this way in the world. I know you travel, I know you'll be in the US with us, but you're also in England or in India and a few other places I know. So um, I just really want to, to invite people to really understand that this essence that is dropping in with all of us here today, anybody who's watching this video, anybody who's in the room with us, anybody who shows in New Jersey and gets a chance to physically meet you and those of us who won't be there, who are at a distance, we'll all be able to have the same experience of this divine, holy connection, this loving presence and essence that you are emanating and we will have our own experience of it. And I know that- Sometimes I think we're even, uh, just, just sorry, just want to say quickly that uh, sometimes we might even be at more of an advantage if we can't be in the room because it kind of forces us to reach deeper inside. Mm -hmm. um, it, it kind of, for me, uh, I was only able to kind of be with a teacher once or twice and that seemed like a huge disadvantage, but actually it really helped me to open up. This is where this is where prayer came from for me. Just um, so sometimes it's even an advantage. Mm -hmm. It's a different way to look at it. But I just, oh, just wanted to say that, you know. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's now we'll get everybody coming on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice when we can really see the advantage of something that is giving itself to us and accept the gift of it. And that's what I hear you saying is, you were saying in the beginning and you just demonstrated everything that shows up as this could be a problem is always an opening for us to explore what is the learning, what is the teaching that we're getting that is actually expanding us, expanding our understanding. So you just demonstrated that as we're talking about Zoom, it's like, oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. And here is the expansion of it. So thank you for being the demonstration of your work and for being such a blessing. Thank you. Yes, yes. And Christina, did you have anything else? I'm just feeling immense gratitude, Helen, um, that you're coming to our community because um, <clears throat> I've reached a lot of clarity just being exposed to you personally and your teachings because there's a, a real um, simplicity about them that has helped me um, move forward and really expand my sense of my own being. And in my new position at CCL, I'm finding that that expansion that really has come from a lot of the, um, the teachings and the, the, the back and forth of being in your community um, helps me to bring that forth from within myself, that oneness, that sense of the, the presence and the connection helps me to bring it forth to others. So I, I really find that invaluable and I'm grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, um, it's always such a joy to to go anywhere where there's this openness and people who really want to that connection it's it's just so rich isn't it and yeah i'm really super excited to be there thank you thank you thank you and we are are very very blessed and honored to have you join this community and um we thank you very much for your time today in sharing this with us and um just if I think I'll do a quick little, um, actually, Helen, would you do a, any kind of closing for our meeting here today? I would just like to offer thanks for what we've shared here today to give, um, Thanks and appreciation and gratitude for this deep, wonderful experience of this richness and when we have this time together. It's never to be taken for granted and completely immersed in as much as possible. And I'm so grateful for that. And just want to... Uh, 
appreciate this moment and say thank you to you both and to everyone at CCL. Looking forward to being there. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are looking forward to having you. Thank you.